Hey guys, so this October I participated in Inktober for the first time and I thought I would make a little video of the ink techniques that I've learned because I was a total noob when I started but I feel like I've really learned a lot and upped my ink game over the course of the month. The first thing I learned was to really make use of all of the various tools that are out there for ink drawing. There are so many different kinds of pens and brushes. Here I'm just showing a couple of the different types of fine liners and different thicknesses of brush pens that I used, but I found that having a good variety of different tools helped me always be able to get the line quality that I was looking for. One thing that I found really helpful was testing out all of the different thicknesses of pens and it helped me figure out which tool I should use for each different piece of this drawing, for example, like the really thin whiskers or the thicker exterior marks on the neck. The next thing I learned was to use those new tools and practice really big lines and swooshes and curves with them. Because one of the things that I really love about ink drawing is when you can get those really smooth, thick to thin marks that brush tips are perfect for. But it actually takes a lot of practice and especially if you're tracing over a sketch, it can be really hard at first. I spent a lot of time just trying to trace over my pencil marks and I'm still not great at it, but I've improved a lot over the course of the month and I felt like sitting down and doing some dedicated practice sessions where I'm just tracing over really, really basic pencil marks has helped me a lot in my ink drawing. I ended up using the exact same method of tracing over wavy pencil marks in this piece for the tassels and the loose wavy fabric. The next technique that I used was using a variety of thick and thin lines. This is really important for inking whether you're doing it digitally or traditionally. And of course, some inking styles don't make use of this. It depends on what you're going for. But in general, using a variety of thick and thin lines can really help bring interest to the piece and it can help direct the eye toward the places that you want it to look. It's also a really great way to separate interior and exterior pieces of a character or a background element. I use this technique a lot in this piece, like for example, I really wanted those nasturtiums to separate from the cat, so I used really thick lines around the edges of them, and then I used thinner lines for the interior fur marks. The next tip involves something kind of unusual, and that is a messed up brush. So something that I discovered was that when I used this super frayed brush that got glue all over it a couple years back, I could get this really interesting scratchy technique. So if you have any old messed up brushes with frayed brush tips and bristles, they can actually be really, really useful for doing things like hair and fur and other scratchy grainy textures. I found that you can do a variety of hair types depending on the, the marks that you make using a fraying brush and it actually is one of my favorite techniques that I've learned. I've used this all the time. I used it on her hair here and then in the next piece I used it to make fluffy bunnies. I wanted the rabbits to feel really really soft so I used just the littlest amount of ink on the frayed brush tips to get that really really soft fur on the rabbits. My next advice is to practice getting various tones of ink washes. So you make ink washes by mixing ink with water. Really, really simple combo, but it can actually be challenging to get the tone that you want. So I would recommend swatching out some different tones and then practicing mixing the right amount of ink to get them. So that then when you're doing a full piece like this and you wanna be able to get a variety of tones in say the bird or the branch, you're able to mix them up efficiently, and if you run out, you know that you'll be able to mix the tone that you need again. My next advice is to practice working into wet ink versus dry ink. So for example, here you can see that I let the first stroke dry, and so when I went over it again, I got a hard edge. Versus working into it when it's still wet, you can actually blend out that hard edge and connect the two strokes that you've made. So here I'm just drawing in a bunch of various shapes using an ink wash and you can see that depending on how dry or how wet the spot that I've already drawn over is, you get a totally different effect when you go over it again with a different stroke. 
and if you let it dry completely then you can really layer up your ink washes to get a lot of depth. The next technique is to lay down an area of wet and to use a wet on wet technique where you drop in wet ink onto wet paper and you can get this really really cool bleeding ink effect. And this looks like galaxies, it can look like fur, it can look like all kinds of things. It's a, it's a really, really cool technique. I used it here to do the full body because I want it to look like kind of a galaxy. So I wet various areas of the body and then just let ink bleed through the whole area that I had wet. The final thing that I learned is to make use of white because it can be really, really hard to leave little white areas where you want highlights. And I found it so much easier to go in with a white ink at the end and use a little brush to add the highlights in. I use that here and in a bunch of my Inktobers to do all the stars. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If I come up with any more cool techniques, I will definitely make a follow-up video. Uh, if you want to see more video topics about Inktober, let me know what you'd want to see in the comments and follow me on social media if you want to follow along with the rest of my Inktober journey.